In today's episode, we're going to remind you how looking outside of the snow globe can inspire your next existential crisis. You guys remember the sun, right? Look how happy that little fella is. The sun's our friend. Life started because of the sun. Oh, look. The sun has a baby face. It's a beautiful ball of warmth and goodness, lighting up our skies and bringing happiness into our hearts. It's a round yellow circle in crayon, very stable and firmly edged, occasionally drawn with an orange lion's mane for coronal effects. Nothing to be afraid of, right? Well, wake up, sheeple! It's time to pull back the curtain of the marketing world. Big crayon fridge art and the children's television conspiracy of our brightly glowing neighborhood monstrosity. That thing is more dangerous than you can ever imagine. You know the sun is a nuclear reaction right next door. Like it's, it's right there. It's right there! It's a mass of incandescent gas with a boiling, bubbling surface of superheated hydrogen. It's filled with a deep yellow rage expressed every few days by lashing out millions of kilometers into space with fiery death tendrils and blasts of super radiation. The magnetic field lines on the sun snap and reconnect, releasing a massive amount of radiation and creating solar flares. Solar plasma constrained in the magnetic loop is instantly released, smashed together and potentially generating X-ray radiation. Big deal. I get X-rayed all the time, you might think. We, the mighty humans, have mastered the X-ray spectrum. Well, not so fast, puny mortal. Just a single X-ray class flare can blast out more juice than a hundred billion nuclear explosions. And then it's just a quick eight minute trip to your house where the radiation hits us with no warning. Solar flares can lead to coronal mass ejections, and they can happen other times too, where huge bubbles of gas are ejected from the sun and blasted into space. And this cosmic goo can take a few hours to get to us and are also excellent setups for nocturnal emission and uh, Dutch oven jokes. Astronomers measure the impact of a solar storm on the Earth using a parameter called DST, or Disturbance Storm Time. We measure the amount that the Earth's protective magnetosphere flexes during a solar storm event. The bigger the negative number, the worse it is. So if we can see an aurora, a geomagnetic storm in the high altitude, it measures about minus 50 nanoteslas. The worst storm in the modern era, the one that overloaded our power grid in 1989, measured about minus 600 nanoteslas. And the most potent solar storm we have on record was so powerful that people saw the northern lights as far south as Cuba. Telegraph lines sparked with electricity and telegraph towers caught on fire. So this was in 1859 and it was clearly named by sci-fi's steampunk division. This was known as the Carrington event and estimated in the minus 800 to minus 1750 nanotesla range. So how powerful do these things need to be to cook our meat parts? The good news is contrary to my earlier fear mongering, the most powerful flare our sun can generate is harmless to life on earth. But don't let your guard down. The sun is still horribly dangerous. It'll bake us alive faster than you could say Hansel and Gretel, assuming you can drag that phrase out over a billion years. As far as flares go, and so long as we stay right here, we'll be fine. You might even see a nice aurora in the sky. But for those of you who use technology on a regular basis, you might not be so lucky. Powerful solar storms can overload power grids and fry satellites. And if the Carrington event happened now, we'd have a lot of power go out and a small orbital scrapyard of dead satellites. Astronauts outside the Earth, perhaps bouncing around on the moon or traveling to Mars, would be in a universe of trouble without a good method of shielding. And the solar flares that the sun can produce is minuscule compared to other stars out there. In 2014, NASA's SWIFT satellite witnessed a flare that generated more than 10,000 times more energy than the most powerful solar flare ever seen. For a brief moment, the surface of red dwarf star DG Canum Vanticorum lit up hotter than 200 million degrees Celsius. That's 12 times hotter than the center of the sun. A blast that powerful would have scoured all life from the face of the earth, except for the future colony of tardigrade descendants. Remember, the water bears are always watching. Young red dwarf stars are renowned for these powerful flares, and this is one of the reasons astronomers think they're not great candidates for life. 
it will be hard to survive blast after blast of radiation from these unruly stars. Alternatively, planets around these stars could be living terrariums inspired by the Gamma World RPG. So breathe easy, don't worry. Perhaps the Sun is our friend, and it truly does have our best interests at heart. It's not a big fan of our technology though, but it's ready to battle alongside us when the robot revolution begins. Oh, also, we're sunscreen, as the Sun's brand of love isn't all that different from Dr. Manhattan's. So have you seen an Aurora display? Tell us a cool story in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. Our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen, and we'd like to thank Francisco Eduardo Juarez and Charles Beller, and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Want to get on the action? Click here. So if we can see an aurora of geomagnetic Heard it blur. <laughs> yeah, no sweetest chef in it. Glad we got a name for that now. <laughs>